Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to learn about 1D kinematics and we're going to practice a sample problem. Let's read the problem together and as we solve this problem, follow along on your own piece of paper and keep it for your notes. Okay? I'm a hurry and it's approaching a stoplight moving with a velocity of positive 30 meters per second. The light turns yellow and Ima applies the brakes and skids to a stop. If Ima's acceleration is negative 8 meters per second squared, then determine the displacement of the car during the skidding process. Alright, so in order to start us off, we need to always identify the variables. Let's take a look at the first one. 30 meters per second, positive 30 meters per second. So according to the problem, what do you think this would be? If you said an initial velocity, good job. All right, reading along, read along, the light turns yellow and Ima applies the brakes and skids to a stop. Now you're gonna see this a lot in physics. Whenever you see the word stop, then that means that your velocity is zero, okay? Um, and in this case, this would be our final velocity. Now, if Ima's acceleration is negative 8.00 meters per second squared, then determine the displacement of the car during the skidding process. Okay, I just saw a number there. Let's focus on that number. Negative 800 meters per second squared. Now, what would that be? Good. That would be our acceleration. So, reading on, now we have to figure out exactly what we need to solve for. So it says, then determine the displacement of the car during the skidding process. So I believe we're going to focus on the word displacement. Um, that is our unknown. And you need to always make sure you note what are the known variables and the unknown variables or the variables that you are looking for. Okay. In this case, displacement delta x will also be final position. If they don't give you an initial position, assume that the initial position is zero. So here we have a table um, that you should fill in okay, with all of our known and unknown variables. Our final velocity we know is 0 meters per second because the car came to a stop. Our initial velocity is 30 meters per second. Uh, we do not know and we are looking for final position aka displacement. The problem didn't give us a position, a initial position, so we are going to assume that that is zero. Okay. Also, the problem told us that the acceleration is negative 8.00 meters per second squared. Make note, I did not say deceleration. Okay. You can only accelerate, not decelerate. So here are our list of equations. Now I want you to take a look at these equations and follow along <coughs> with your chart. Did the problem give us a final velocity? Yes. Good. Let's move on. Did the problem give us a initial velocity? Yes. Let's move on. Did the problem give us an acceleration? Yes. Let's move on. Did the problem give us time? No. Are we looking for time? No. We do not need to use this equation. Let's go to the next one. Did we get final velocity? Yes. Did we get initial velocity? Yes. Did we get acceleration? Yes. Did we get displacement? No. Are we looking for displacement? Yes. So right there is the equation that you'll need to use. Now, just to see if we can use any other equation, let's take a look at the third and fourth one. Now we know that we do not have time and we don't need to find time. Okay. We are looking for displacement. We have initial velocity and we have final velocity but we do not have time so in this one equation we have two unknown 
variables. That means we can't use it. The last equation has displacement. We're looking for that. But it also has time. We don't have that. So this equation has two unknown variables. That means we cannot use it. So let's use the second variable. Second equation, excuse me. Here are my chart of knowns and unknowns. On my right is the equation that we will be using. All you have to do is plug in the numbers where they belong. For example, VF, we have 0, so we're going to put 0 squared, is equal to, the initial says it's 30 meters per second, so it'll be 0 squared is equal to 30 squared plus 2A, A we know is negative 8, and then delta X. So once you fill in your equation, it's going to look something like this. After that, all you have to do is solve the equation step by step. 0 squared is equal to 0. 30 squared is equal to 900. 2 times negative 8 is equal to negative 16. And then we have delta x. Just like that. Okay. What you want to do at this point is isolate or have the unknown variable on one side and one side only. For this example, I'm going to have the unknown variable delta x or displacement on the right hand side by subtracting 900 from both sides. Just like that. So at this point we want to isolate delta x. The best way to do that is by getting rid of the negative 16. Now technically that negative 16 is being multiplied by delta x. Whenever you multiply something in order to get rid of that number, you have to divide by the same number. So it looks something like this. Now if you have negative 16 on top and negative 16 on the bottom, it turns into 1. Efficiently getting rid of the 16. Okay, Plug in your calculators, 900 divided by 16, and we get that delta x is equal to 56 0.25 meters. Don't forget the units. Thank you.